Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you today a man who I have loved and respected my entire life, my father, Donald J. Trump. È il 16 giugno del 2015. Il magnate dell'immobiliare Donald Trump dalla Trump Tower di New York City, simbolo del suo impero, annuncia che correrà alle primarie presidenziali del Partito Repubblicano. Al centro del suo programma per rendere di nuovo grande l'America c'è l'immigrazione. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. But Donald Trump has una solution. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Mark my word. al confine sud degli Stati Uniti, dove Donald Trump vuole costruire il suo muro. Siamo a Laredo, Texas. Qui il 96% della popolazione è di origine ispanica. Da qui passa il 40% di tutti gli scambi commerciali fra America e Messico. La piccola città di Laredo è il più grande porto interno degli Stati Uniti d'America. Qui con... Uh deputy del sheriff uh, office in Webb County, Laredo, Texas. Stiamo avvicinando la Rio Grande, il fiume che divide America e Messico. Vuol farci vedere da un posto lì, osservatorio, il confine. Eccoci. Vamos a utilizzar nomás para ver. Ahí van palos alucines. Sepan que esto no es un juego. The idea of building a wall, whether that would be effective here? Well, I, I don't think it would be effective at all. It would be very ineffective and a waste of funds. The funds can be utilized for other assets, as a surveillance, uh, more technology, more boots on the, on the ground, more officers being hired from the sheriff's office, from the, the beginning of the border all the way from California all the way down here to Texas. That money can be utilized for other things. A wall would be obsolete. Ci stiamo avvicinando alle rive del Rio Grande, che dal Golfo del Messico fino al Paso traccia per due terzi, circa 2000 km, il confine sud degli Stati Uniti. Al di là del fiume c'è la messicana Nuevo Laredo, teatro da anni di una guerra sanguinosa tra cartelli della droga, gli stessi che controllano l'immigrazione illegale. Spesso, spiega il vice sceriffo Mario Reyes, gli spari di pistola si sentono fino a qui, anche in pieno giorno. I migranti provano a attraversare il fiume in diversi punti contemporaneamente, in gruppi di 10 o 15 persone, e sperano che almeno un gruppo riesca a passare senza essere bloccato. Attraversano con i gomoni, a nuoto e, nei periodi di secca, guardano il fiume a piedi. Portano con loro in un sacchetto degli abiti puliti. Li indossano e si confondono con la popolazione locale nelle ore di punta. Questo che vedete in uniforme verde è un membro della Border Patrol, la potente polizia di frontiera. Nel marzo 2016 la Border Patrol, attraverso il suo sindacato, fa il primo endorsement della sua storia a un candidato presidenziale. È un appoggio incondizionato ed entusiasta per Donald Trump. Un'intesa scoccata immediatamente agli albori della sua discesa in campo. Già nel luglio 2015, Trump arriva a Laredo a bordo del suo jet privato, su invito del presidente del sindacato della Border Patrol locale. So, my name is Hector Garza. Uh, I was raised in, born in Houston, Texas, raised in Laredo. Uh, I am the president for the National Border Patrol Council, Local 2455, which is based 
out of Laredo, Texas. In June 2015, Donald Trump announced his uh, bid for the White House. Uh, you got in touch with him. Tell me about that. What happened back then? Uh, so when Mr. Trump announced that he was running for president, you know, he was talking strongly about border security. And, and, and as a union and as border patrol agents, uh, we care about border security. We see it firsthand. We see it every day. So um, a lot of the statements that Mr. Trump was making regarding the border, you know, resonated with our organization and with, and with the agents that we represent. And we ultimately did invite Mr. Trump to the border, and uh, Mr. Trump did, it, uh, did accept our invitation, and he, uh, he made a quick tour of the border. Mr. Trump, one of his most famous and I guess in, in some parts of America controversial proposals is to build a wall along the Mexican border and make the Mexicans pay for it. Can you tell me, do you agree with that? Uh, I, I really don't have an opinion on, on Mexico paying for it. Uh, I really don't have an opinion on that. What I can tell you is that, uh, yes, that we do need a physical barrier along the border. Uh, in some parts of the border, we do, have, we do need a, a physical barrier like a wall. However, in order for us to determine what exactly is needed in the different sections of the border, we have to make sure that, that uh, Mr. Trump or any other candidate that, that wants to secure the border, that they actually meet with the men and women that actually uh, secure the border on a daily basis. And the real border security experts are border patrol agents uh, that are the boots on the ground. Se ne meno lo stesso Gaza crede che un muro lungo tutto il confine sia la soluzione definitiva, lo sceriffo di Laredo e il suo secondo in comando sono a dir poco scettici. What is the feeling about Mr. Trump's proposals for building a wall? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think that we should build a wall. Is it going to be in the middle of the river? Is it going to be on this side of the river where we won't be able to see the river anymore or go fishing? Or, or where is that wall going to be built? Because the Border Patrol Union says they want a wall. They say they endorse Trump. <laughs> you heard that. Well, I've it's been in the newspapers. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know the mentality on that because. Uh, when you build the wall, they're going to climb over, they're going to, you know, dig yeah. a hole, and yeah. it's going to happen anyway. Lo sceriffo Quiller ha lavorato in passato come agente infiltrato nei cartelli della droga messicani. Persino il suo cane è un vero duro, un eroe di guerra. Sergeant Denzo is a um, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq uh, veteran, and uh, he, he is eight years old. He found four bombs in Afghanistan, saved a lot of lives, a lot of soldiers. No, Denzel, Denzel, no, Papa. This used to be my uniform when I was thin like him and he used to fit me. That's me when I had black hair. Um, this is me working undercover. This is one of my bigger cases. Um, that was three, almost 3,000 pounds of cocaine and $3.6 million in U.S. currency. Quailer mi consiglia di fare una chiacchierata con lo sceriffo di Brooks County a Falfurias, 90 km a nord-est di Laredo. Benny Martinez è in prima fila nella lotta ai cartelli e recentemente è stato oggetto di minacce da parte delle Zetas, la più potente organizzazione criminale messicana. I don't, I don't agree with the wall, it's simply because it's just the cost, for one thing. I believe, I truly believe that more resources on the ground, more boots on the ground, more technology. Because even with the wall, you still have someone to mandate the wall. So in, in that essence, you're pretty much providing more funding for private sector, mm -hmm. okay, versus actually just trying to, to solve the issue because you have to distinguish the criminal element from, from that mother and child. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm yet to see a mother and child be a threat to the United States. Tell me about the kind of things you deal with here and especially uh, we, we've come here because we heard you're, you're very experienced in issues concerning illegal immigrants among other issues and smuggling. Brooks County is very unique, 900, 944 square miles. What makes it unique is the United States Border Patrol checkpoint. It's located 13 miles south of town. That's what makes it unique in the sense that we get what we refer to as uh, drop-offs. Uh, that's a conveyance, a vehicle, that's maybe carrying 10 to 15 passengers that are undocumented crossers, and then they, uh, they go off into the brush. And during their journey across, uh, the this rough terrain we have is, is treacherous. Um, they get lost, or they get injured, they get sick, and they get left behind. 
and we have to go and do the what I refer to as a recovery, a deceased body, and uh, that's just one issue. The other issue is that uh, the young females that are coming across, they usually get violated, sexually assaulted, as they're coming across. They don't bring enough food, enough water, you know, things to the elements to keep themselves up and running. So to avoid the um, the checkpoint. Yes. They're walking for a week or five days? They're probably walking for five to six days, depends how far out they go. Can they 20, 30 miles or 40 well, miles? Well, it's probably, probably like 30 miles because it's, they're, they're south of the checkpoint. They go east and west, so the terrain is, is harsh. It's sandy. You know, we, we have huge sand dunes out there. This is the coastal south, yeah. so the sand dunes are there. You'll get one, three, maybe three or five from the group that'll get sick and get left behind. Some right. Right now, the the border patrol has picked up a lot of a lot of uh, resources to where they're actually being found. Right. You know, we've, we've gotten probably over 500 in the last close to a year or so that's been recovered, rescued. Uh, so that helps. But you do have those that are not recovered. Right. They're not rescued. You're talking about bodies. Bodies. Right. Yes. Right. On day one, we will begin working on an impenetrable physical tall, powerful, beautiful southern border wall. Donald Trump appare molto determinato, ma costruire un muro sulle rive del Rio Grande non sarà una passeggiata. Così come non sarà semplice costringere il Messico a sostenerne le spese. L'unica certezza è che in un modo o l'altro il costo umano sarà molto elevato.